Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. Uh, today we're going to do two videos, I think. I'll do a Sudoku video later on, but I have a bit of time today, so I'm going to do uh, a solve of today's Times Cryptic crossword as well. So let's take a look at it now. Um, just to mention, we've had a software update as well on the Sudoku side of the, uh, the web app. Um, so now you should be able to highlight multiple cells at once, and uh, uh, it should all be working very smoothly. So I hope you enjoy that. Um, enjoy the channel please do subscribe we appreciate it We're trying to grow our numbers uh, and if you're in a position to do uh, sponsorship on patreon massively appreciated obviously now let's have a look at this um, I'm not going to go too quickly today so if you're new to solving cryptic crosswords um, this might be suitable um, so let's start with one across unable to get on or unable to get on topic men bail out now, the first thing we need to know when we're solving cryptic crosswords is there's always a definition in the string of words that you see. And that definition is almost always at the beginning or the end of the clue. It's very rare you see it in the middle. Um, and it's very rare that the whole clue is the definition. There is one type of clue that that does apply to. But in effect, what we'd be able to do if we could read the clues correctly is we could turn a cryptic crossword into a quick crossword, into a definition style crossword, into a crossword indeed much more like the New York Times uh, crossword or an American style crossword. That is very possible if we're able to read the clues correctly. Now, so if one side of the clue is a definition, what's the rest of it? Well, the rest of it is so-called wordplay. Uh, and that means normally some way of scrambling up the letters that you're given or putting words inside other words in order to create the answer to the definitional part of the clue. So here, um, I've done enough crosswords to know that when I see the word out in a crossword clue, uh, it, it can be an anagram indicator. So once I know that, I'm looking for anagram fodder. The clue is 12, the answer is 12 letters long. So we need to look at the words topic, men and bail here. Now if we add up the number of letters there, that's 12 letters. We put those letters out, we shuffle them. And the whole thing means unable to get on. Um, right, which I think is going to be incompatible. And we're off and running. So let's try and use our letters. They cover poles in charge of room facing north and hopefully you can see um, that I'm reading the clue very slowly there I'm not reading it in any natural way obviously if we read the clue naturally we go they cover poles in charge of room facing north now that is not the way to read a cryptic crossword clue we need to read it slowly uh, and in bits if you like so they cover, or they cover poles, in charge of room facing north. Now, if I was to tell you that the definition here is they cover poles, and you looked at this, and you thought of the north and south pole, all of a sudden the clue becomes solvable, I think, as a quick crossword clue. The answer is ice caps. How does the rest of it work? Well, in charge, if, uh, if you were to see IC next to somebody's name, it would mean in charge. It's one of those uh, abbreviations that are legion in, in crossword clues. Now, you may say, how on earth was I meant to know that? Well, lots of abbreviations we see in ordinary life are valid crossword abbreviations. You know, if, if you saw WC on a toilet door, it wouldn't... Uh, you know, we wouldn't think twice about it. We know what it means. Um, and that comes up hot and cold on taps, you would see. If you look at cricket scorecards, there's all sorts of abbreviations that are valid. And we have to just learn them. Um, but learning them isn't so onerous if you practice. Um, they do become quite natural. So let's look at this. In charge of it, I see. Room facing north. Well, if we reverse a synonym for the word room, we get space. Facing north, well, we reverse the word space in a down clue. 
Uh, if it faces north, it would reverse, it would go upwards, and that gives us the ending. So ice caps is the answer, and we're off and running. Mm -hmm. Now, I'll go a bit faster from now on, but I wanted to give you that flavour for how we're going to approach each of these clues. Um, in fact, this is quite an easy crossword today. I'm seeing a, quite a few clues that I can solve very quickly. So drive second to right. Um, so let's have a think about if I tell you that the definition here is drive. So five letter word that means drive. And the answer here is motor. Let's think about how the rest of it works. A second, if you give someone a second, you give them a mo or a moment. So mo. Two is just plain. This T, this O. Two. Right. R. So put all that together, you get motor. And we'll go through and I'll try and I'll try and tell you what the quick crossword definition part of the clue is. Give you a chance to, to guess at the answer if you're not used to these puzzles. Dearth of screws spoiled clothing unit. Uh, dearth of screws. I think it's going to be an anagram of dearth of screws. Spoiled is saying um, it's uh, it's an anagram. Clothing unit should be able to solve that and can't. Uh, I was thinking of something like crown of thorns or something, but I don't think that's right. Let's have a look at this one. Assemble before empty court. So this is a five-letter word that means assemble in the in the sense of build. Uh, so see if you can think of the answer. The answer is erect. Ear, E-R-E, -E, is a word that means before. If you do something ear, something else. And empty court is saying empty out the contents of the word court. If we do that, we're just left with a C and a T, which is this C and this T here. Antenna limits radio telephony along major roads. Antenna limits radio to life. I should be able to solve that. Oh, no, I have got that. Is this arterial, I think? Okay. I should not give you the definition there. I was just surprised I suddenly thought of it. Okay, so here, believe it or not, RT is apparently an abbreviation for radio telephony. Now, I didn't know that. Um, and that has aerial which is a synonym for antenna around the outside. So the antenna is limiting, it's con you know, it's constraining RT, and arterial means along major roads. Oh, so is this chest of drawers then? For our yeah, for our anagram. Yes, it is. I was thinking of a clothing unit as in a piece of clothing. Um, right, this one should be doable. Game frequently interrupt society dance okay well here you're looking for a game um, let's read the rest of it and I'll tell you how to think about the rest of it S can be an abbreviation for society you need a four letter word for a dance and a three letter word which means frequently so you're going to put the three letter word for frequently inside S plus a four letter word for a dance see if you can think of the answer it's softball which is oft for frequently in S plus ball for a dance. Let's try and use the B. Make mess of most of top pitch. So most of top pitch. Uh, don't know. Four down. Sort of farmer employing cook for fetching. Okay. So this time you're looking for a word that means fetching. And you need a sort of farmer, six letters. And you're going to employ or put that around um, a word, a two letter word that means cook. So I think the farmer's quite gettable here because we have the A at the start, the A, you know, arable looks very likely, doesn't it? So can you think of a two letter word we can put in for if you cook something, you do it. Put that inside we get adorable which of course means fetching. Capri for one is nearly all rented out. Okay well here we're looking for a four-letter word for 
which means Capri for one. So mm -hmm. it's what what is Capri an example of? Now the clue here is trying to make you think of the Ford Capri, the car, but there's obviously a more normal uh, uh, proper noun. Uh, Capri is an island. So the answer here is Isle. Is, again like with the two we saw earlier in motor, is this just plain? Is, it's just this is, and nearly all rented out. If you if you rent something out, it you let it. Rent, so nearly all of the word let is L and E, put that together, we get aisle. Unaware, left island blocking patent. Okay, so here we're looking for a nine letter word which means unaware. I'll tell you that left and island have abbreviations. L can be left, we saw R for right earlier. Island can be I or IS. So you're looking to put an L and an I or an L and an IS inside a word that means patent. Go in here to mean unaware. The answer, oblivious. So there you can see obvious for patent with L and I in the middle. Six down. Maximum efforts make flat worst. Okay, so here we're looking for an expression which means maximum efforts. If you put your maximum efforts into something, you would be said to be doing your... How does the rest of it work? We need a five-letter word, which means flat, followed by a four-letter word, which means worst. Flat is level. If you worst someone, you best them. It's one of those odd words that can mean its opposite as well in certain senses. Um, level best, obviously, is your maximum efforts. Let's try this one, put an L in it. Mistransporting large old bishop everywhere. Uh, uh, okay, I've got that. I was being really slow there because I was trying to put an A at the start of this. Uh, this doesn't have an A at the start. So we need a three letter word that means miss. Uh, obviously, when you look at words like that, we have to be very flexible in our minds. Never, um, we'll never assume when you read the clue that the, the words in the clue are taking the meaning the clue would require them to have. So here we've got Miss transporting large old bishop everywhere. Miss would seem to be suggesting the name of a girl uh, or, or a lady. Miss can obviously also mean to miss or to omit or to you know forget something or overlook it. So you need to be thinking in those terms as well. Here, in fact, it is uh, a female meaning of the word miss, but never assume that. Transporting large can be L, O can be old, and bishop has two common abbreviations. One is B from chess. The other is RR, right reverend, as in um, the church. So here we need to put L-O-B in the middle of a three-letter word for miss, and it means everywhere. The answer, of course, is global. Seven down. Pelican alongside zebra. That's cheating. <laughs> okay, well, here we mean we need an expression which means that's cheating. And the rest of the clue here is a little bit of a pun. You get to see if you can think of a way in which a pelican and a zebra can be related to one another. And what you need to realize is that they're both types of road crossing. So a pelican alongside a zebra would be a double crossing. And of course, if you double cross someone, you cheat them. That's how that one works. Sometimes it's good to look at the, um, uh, the, the letters in a clue, especially if they're in slightly strange positions and see if you can guess the answer. So I can only think of one word that fits here. Let's see if it's right. So yes, it is, because I can see that shelter here is the definition. So shelter, a poor area bringing in yen. Well, yen, of course, is the Japanese currency, and if you uh, if you are used to trading in currency, you'll know it has the abbreviation Y. So we need to put uh, a poor area. Now, A here, one thing to note about a crossword, a good cryptic crossword clue, is it should never have any superfluous words. Now, sometimes, in uh, broadsheet crosswords, that rule is, is not obeyed, um, but 
most of the time it will be. So this A here, what's it doing? Is it necessary? Wouldn't the clue mean exactly the same thing if we just said shelter poor area bringing in the N? It would, it would mean the same thing. So we have to ask ourselves, why is this A here? It must be necessary for the word play. So in fact, that A is that A there. A poor area, well that's a slum. Let's put the Y in the middle, we get asylum, which of course is shelter. Say visibly embarrassed Europeans getting married. Okay, well this means save. Um, here what you need to know is that M can be an abbreviation for married and E can be an abbreviation for European. Now here you've got Europeans. Now this is a bit naughty, some people don't like this um, and some crosswords, and the list of crosswords I don't think would accept this. Um, but Europeans here is indicating double E because it's saying take two of the abbreviation for the word European. Now of course if you looked in Chambers Dictionary under Europeans or under double E you wouldn't see Europeans and that's why some people object to it. Um, if you're visibly embarrassed you're red. Red-faced so redeem is the answer. We've done the whole top half now so that's good let's try and use this W. Some hide mate married on the rebound. Mate married. Um, ah, ah, that's quite difficult. Okay. So, how to explain this? This this means some hide. So so obviously, um, there are a few ways of reading that. Um, mate married on the rebound is suggesting we have to rebound something or reverse it and of course it's very difficult to know whether you have to reverse a word that means mate plus a word that means married or even just M we've already just looked at how M can be a valid abbreviation for married or whether mate is going forwards followed by a reversal of just the married word so this one is not an easy clue um, now how did I solve it well there are two or three short synonyms for mate. One of the most popular is pal. So I considered whether or not this clue could contain a reversal of the word pal. Now if I was to put that in there, can you see what the answer might be now? I think it's probably only one word that fits this. And it's dewlap, which is of course a flap of skin. So here, how does it work? We've got mate, pal, married, wed, on the rebound, all reversed to give Dewlap. Probably not the easiest clue we've looked at. Um, let's try and use the D. Win over French nobleman in match. Um, okay. Uh, I almost solved that. <laughs> Um, let's come back to it. I haven't, I haven't quite worked out how one bit of it works. Uh, teacher, ignoring note, put weight on. Teacher, ignoring weight, put weight on. I think this will mean put weight on. Um, but again, I haven't solved that one either. That's a bit embarrassing. Right, let's look at 24 across. Find the lady, maybe, daughter hiding in trailer with haystack. Ah, okay, that's a good clue. Now, the definition here is find the lady, maybe. So find the lady, you may not know it, but it, it is an example of something, something a magician might do. Um, daughter can be abbreviated to D. So we need to put a D, because D is hiding in, so D is inside a three-letter word for a trailer, no, four-letter word for a trailer, sorry, and a four-letter word for a haystack. Now, I only know one word for a haystack, and that really solved the clue for me. The word I know for a haystack is Rick. So now can you see the answer? The answer is card trick. 
So you've got cart with a D in the middle plus Rick and card trick find the lady. I think it's one of those card tricks where you hide a queen somewhere. This one has a K in it. Let's do that. Small pot preserving queen's tooth. Um, preserving queen. Queen is very often ER. Uh, Elizabeth Regina, current UK queen, um, can also be a cat. Um, I suspect this means tooth. So I'm thinking maybe sprocket. Gosh, it is sprocket. Yeah, sorry, I should have. Uh, I said it meant tooth and then sort of revealed the answer, but I, I was thinking at the same time. So a tooth is a sprocket, or something you might get on a gear. S can be a small, a pocket is a pot. If you pocket something in snooker, you pot it. Preserving queen. Well, queen here is not ER, it's just R. Um, so R can be uh, an abbreviation for either monarch, king or a queen, rex or regina, I think is how that works. So um, sprocket is the answer. Again, not easy. Johnny come lately's. Okay, well that's the definition here. Stumped in high class roles. OK, well, here we have our first example, I think, today of a cricket abbreviation. So stumped is something that uh, has an abbreviation on a cricket scorecard. It's ST. So we need to put ST in something. High class can be a uh, mean U. U is one of those odd abbreviations. Uh, I don't know quite why U is, means high class. Maybe it means upper class. Um, and then five letter word for roles and the answer of course now is upstarts Johnny come lately uh, let's try 19 down setting times free in most quarters okay well um, I think this means setting times free well free can be an anagram indicator that's saying take the letters of the word time and anagram them and put those letters in most quarters. Well, the problem with quarter here is that it has, um, it's thinking of quarters of the compass. So I think what we're going to be looking at is three of the four abbreviations for north, south, east, and west. So we've got one here. Um, and setting is going to be what? Um, I haven't actually solved that one, but I, I think that will be how it works. Let's have a look at this one. One wearing medals, running funny business. One wearing medals, running funny business. So I think this is going to mean funny business. And medals running. Hmm. I was wondering whether this is an anagram of the word medals. Running could be an anagram indicator, but the problem with that analysis is A, it's hard to see a good two-letter word that we could make using the word medals. Um, the other thing is that running, if something is running, it's on. And that is a much, um, you know, it's a much nicer ending. So what about one just being an I, as in the Roman numeral, for the number one, and then a five-letter word for medals. So I think that's looking good, because then we can put gongs around I and get goings on, which are, of course, funny business. Finish up standard musical work. OK, well, this is uh, just a um, name of a musical work. Uh, we need a six-letter word for standard, and we're going to take the finish, the, the ending letter, off it. And there we're looking for norma. Normal, of course, without its last letter. It may charge money. It may charge. Ah, OK, this is a double definition. So we need something that might charge. And now we see there are a few senses in which you might charge something. Uh, and then another, uh, and it also means money. Now, 
this is one of these things that again a bit of crossword experience comes up rhino is the answer there rhino is something that might charge obviously and it is a word for money so ah now that is interesting because now it looks like I totally misread this clue because time is not being anagrammed in the middle of this um, setting times free in most quarters setting time free ah don't know okay well we'll come back to it hopefully we'll figure it out hum very loudly after returning home this means hum now uh, this is a good example of how we have to not read the clue literally so if we read the clue as hum very loudly after returning home it suggests that we're sort of <laughs> humming away to ourselves no hum here has a different meaning very loudly that's taken from musical scores if you were to see uh, an abbreviation on a musical score of FF that would mean play very loudly after returning home so we've got FF after a two letter word for home being reversed now if you are in you are home so the word play there isn't too difficult and a NIF is a, is a hum if something hums it smells divert RAF importing what keeps firm afloat divert RAF importing so that's going to be an anagram I think of RAF importing and what keeps firm afloat is going to be a profit margin ah now I've got this now okay this is a yeah this is a quite a difficult clue so it doesn't mean setting it means setting time um, and that probably you're all shouting at the uh, screen for a while about the answer here. So this is the time that something sets. Free, four letter word for free in most of quarters. So we do need three of the four quarters of the compass. We need S, W and N. We put undo in the middle for free and we get sundown, which means setting time. So the setter completely uh, fooled me there. Um, good setting. Um, 14 down. Make mess of bespatter. Uh, uh, most of top pitch. Yeah. So if you top something, you best it. Um, and your pitch, your sales patter, bespatter to make a mess. Two more. Uh, teacher, ignoring note, put weight on. Ah. ah, but again, I should take my own advice. Um, this is a good clue. Okay, so we need an eight letter word for a teacher and we're going to remove a note from that. Now, what does removing a note mean? Well, a note is normally a musical note. Now, obviously, we could think of a musical note as A, B, C, D, E, F or G. But you could also think of it as in do, re, mi, fo, fa, so, la, ti, do. And each of those notes has a spelling, a two, normally a two-letter uh, spelling. So we need to remove one of those notes from the eight-letter word for a teacher and put weight on. The, um, good, good clue this, because when I was reading the clue, I kept thinking about a teacher putting on weight, as in fattening up. But if you put weight on something in the sense of you put weight on a sentence that you were writing, what would you do to it? You would stress it. And that's the clue that we needed to answer the, uh, or to get the answer. Mistress, do, re, mi, the musical note mi there is spelled M-I. So we remove M-I from mistress and we get stress, which is to put weight on. Very clever. OK, so now I have got this one. So win over. I'm sure you all can see the answer. How does the rest of it work? Well, the French nobleman is three letters uh, and we need to put that in match. 
And when I read the clue originally, I was thinking matches in a cricket match or something like that, so it was, or a football match. I was thinking of tie, T-I-E, and I couldn't see how I could put D-U-C, which is the, uh, the French nobleman that I know, inside tie to make anything meant win over. But I think it's matches in C. If you see eye to eye, you match with somebody. And I think that um, gives us the answer, which is seduce. So that's the Times Crossword done. I, I went through it quite slowly today, but I hope that was useful for those of you who are newer to the cryptic crossword. They are absolutely delightful, um, but they do take practice. Um, and, you know, I think if you watch the channel, we, we try and do at least one complete run through of a uh, difficult cryptic crossword once a week. Um, and over time, you, you'll pick up some of the conventions and open yourself up to this wonderful, wonderful linguistic world. Thanks for watching. Be back soon with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.